Hey guys, um, yeah, so tonight was the showdown between the Orchard Audio uh, GAN Ultra Amplifier, the Jolita 3502P, uh, all driven by my BAT um, VK50-SE. Um, I used AudioQuest uh, McKenzie interconnects for both with and without the preamp. I did both streaming CDs, SA CDs, and I'm going to make it quick, guys. Um, there's going to be some more stuff I'm going to do on this video, but spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Anybody want to buy an amp? Um, moral of the story is I still need this guy both as my control center and as beautiful as this thing sounds, this guy just kicks it up a notch. Um, just for example, when I started when I started setting up this test, I ran two tracks. I ran uh, Patricia Barber's "What a Shame" uh, CD from uh, not from um, Amazon, but my personal copy. And I also ran um, what was it? So what? I should have known that <laughs> off of uh, Kinda Blue. And in a nutshell. And again, I never noticed this before because I didn't really have anything to compare against. Tube preamp, tube amp, especially in this scenario. And I'm not running any mini DSP, as you guys can see. The wooden box is out of the picture, so there's no 1,000 watt uh, Parts Express ice amps. It's purely this amp driving this whole setup or this amp driving this whole setup with or without the preamp. Without the preamp, this thing sounded pretty good as I've been listening to for the last week, or two weeks, sorry. Without the preamp, this guy had enough bass drive, but was a tad soft on the treble, especially on the vocal sibilances. As soon as I added this guy in the mix with this guy, the, the I guess it's the second order harmonics that tubes are famous for, and I never really noticed this before it was really really rich I mean to the point where if you put the volume up a little too much it was just wow a little too in my face for my taste but this tube preamp with the 6H30s fully balanced into this guy also fully balanced it kicks this guy up a notch in that as good as this thing sounds out of the box this guy just gives it a little bit more openness. It doesn't mush the treble, but it just gives it enough of a roll off where it's still sweet to the ears. I was afraid that I was not going to like this in line with this guy, and then what do I do? Because then it's basically get a switcher circuit and all that. I didn't want to do any more DIY stuff in that case. But this guy... Um, Again, I'm going to do some more testing this weekend. This is just the beginning of the video. Um, this guy may be financing the build of this guy, which is the next thing. Um, I'm going to insert some pictures. But um, you can see over here, maybe, in the picture, in the, in the, in the video, that... This is going to be my prototype. Well, this is going to be the. This is five channels, or it will be five channels of that guy. And I'm basically running. These are the transformers from last year's ill fated. Um, uh, the uh, Bosque amplifiers. Well, I shouldn't call them Bosque, the Bosque, the version one of the Star Crimson amplifier. So Leo's new amps, it's a differential voltage. Um, these guys, this will be driving two of the ultra amplifier boards. This transformer will, will be driving three of the ultra amplifier boards. Um, I've still got another toroidal to install over here. Uh, some reference voltages that I have to set up for the amplifier boards. Um, but I've already got the plus minus 28 volts already sorted out and it's nice and stable, super clean. And 
yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm really excited, and I'm even going to the point where I'm going to be ordering blank printed circuit boards from Leo. Um, an associate of his will mount the hard to put on parts, but all the surface mount resistors, capacitors, ICs, I'll be putting those on here at home because I've done surface mount soldering for the last, you know, 26 years of my career pretty much. And um, I've got a USB microscope and uh, I'll be good to go some solder paste, um, clean everything up after the fact and follow um, uh, Leo's uh, instructions to the T and we should be good. And the beauty with reusing this old Niles chassis is I've already got the holes punched for the for the banana, um, the five-way binding posts. And same goes for, I'll have to get my um, step drill and I'll just make some of these holes a little bigger for the XLRs. And that's the video for now. I'll give you, I'll, there'll be more to this uh, this weekend, but that's the start. Thanks guys. See you soon. Bye.